Right, we're going to go for a walk around Brecon. Jack's over from the States, so we just thought we'd go for a little bimble, a little walk around, take the dog, just get out in nature. I'll tell you what it is as well, is how simple it is. Like the other day when we did that little micro adventure, it doesn't have to be a massive expedition or cost loads of money. You just go get out into nature and do something. It's a bit physically hard, but you feel so good after it. Yeah, but, they ruined it for me. For yeah, sure. military is really good at ruining <laughs> outdoor stuff. Now I really enjoy it again, going mm. and getting back into the outdoors and yeah. diving. Civvy world, scuba, spit of scuba gear, nice blue clear waters, warm. Military, fucking Portland or Plymouth, <laughs> you can't see your hand in front of your face, way down in a ton of kit, spinning along, looking at a compass board for two hours. There's not much that a good day out on the hill can't solve or cheer you up. So on the hills, you get, once you finish March, there is a line of lorries, four ton lorries. And basically as lads finish, once a lorry is full, it will leave. So I used to kill myself to get around as quick as possible to make sure I was on that first four tonner or at least second four tonner, because it means you get back to camp faster and you've got more time to stretch, eat, basically chill out. Yeah. Whereas if you get on one of those last ones, especially if you get back first to one of the later ones, you could be waiting another two hours for the dribs and drabs yeah. of slow people to get in and you get back about five hours after everyone else. And so you have, you basically have time, you get back, get out of your kit, eat some food, then you're in bed and then you're back into it straight yeah. away so you don't get any of that decompression time. Sounds really bad, but you almost take power when you're back at camp and you see people just coming in or when you go around the hills and you just see people sat on their burger and just, they're basically just giving up. You almost gain power from that. You use it as fuel, don't you? It's, I find the military is a really funny one. You work, especially on selection courses, you don't get through it if you don't bond with people and work together. Yeah. But by the very nature of the people on that course, everyone's uber competitive. Striving to do their so, best. Yeah, and so you're always that element <clears throat> of competitiveness between it, even though you never actively do anything. You always help people, you never actively do stuff so other people do badly. But you take power from when you are still there and other people have gone off. It almost drives you on. Drives you on, yeah. gives you confidence, however you want to do it, uh, however you want to frame it. Yeah. So yeah, you still... <laughs> Make sure it's back on that first. Yeah, 100%. Being in first your climate. sleeping bag, sat there warm, waiting for them to come in was just with a massive smile on your face. Yeah, I love it. Else, come. People are kind of starting to talk about how bad it is, how unachievable it is. That just brought home it just reminded me that hill, being hills fit is so specific. It, you can't, if you want to get good at hiking with weight, you have to hike with weight. You, you, there's just no two ways about it. You can do that general baseline fitness, which is all great. But if you want to get better at something specific, or you say being in the hills, then you have to get out in the hills. Same with like courage and fear. If you're scared of something, go and do it. It's the best way to do it. Obviously yeah. there's elements and levels to it. Don't yeah. just go and jump straight out of an aeroplane, but that's if you feel uncomfortable in the hills, come out and walk around and gauge it up and level it up. That's the key, it's levels. Well, mental toughness is essentially learning to embrace fear and discomfort, and the only way you do that is step towards it, and you just do it in levels. Like, but baby steps, yeah. You look like we've both been through Royal Marines training. You don't go from week one, walking through the gates, to the end product. Like It's eight months, seven days a week, 24 hours a day yeah. of progressive incremental training to get to that point. So it's not, nothing magic. It's just that we chose that path and spent a lot of time on it. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Thing is, you did. Do you remember when you get there on the first day and you have that, you have the opening brief in the canteen and there's like, I think there was a 220 that started my selection. And you look around and you judging, weighing people up, you're like, oh, they look mega strong yeah. or, you know, that bloke's not gonna be here. I also remember the chief instructor being like, look around and in two weeks time, you'll all be sat down. There'll all be enough chairs for you all to sit down. Yeah, but the people who always sometimes that look the strongest, they're gone on day two. You yeah. just can't, you, because so much of it is, it's mindset, yeah. because everyone who turns up on the day for selection, 
they're all marines, paras, you know, at that point, everyone had kind of done a, an Afghan or something. So people have gone through hard courses to get there and done hard things on operational tours. And people would, like you say, give up. At, the one that always got me is you do, I think it's like week two or something, it's called Black Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, when oh, yeah. do march in the day and instead of going back to camp, you get taken to another location, you have dinner out there and then you do a night march. And people start, they get set off, so they're set off walking, and you'd see the same bloke 30 minutes later just come back. They basically just started walking and go, no, I'm not doing this, like, because you're a bit tired and out. And I'm like, what did you think you want? And that thing is, the hills aren't even selection. The hills is just to get your plane ticket to go to the jungle where selection really starts. And in comparison, you know, from the outside, it looks like the hills is hard, and it is hard in one sense, but in comparison to the jungle, to walk, you're just going for a walk in the park. Look, like, that is where selection takes place. And so you just, it just comes down to A, it's mindset, like you said, and it's resolve. It's the higher you want to go in something, or the harder something is, whether that's, in this case, the military, business, whatever it is, you need a deeper and deeper level of resolve. You've got to want to pass it for its own sake, not for more cash or the image or whatever it is. If you, if you don't want to pass it for its own sake, for the sake of soldiering, it's like it, you won't get through it because it gets so dark in times especially in the jungle that you just quit you just you just wouldn't do it and it's the same you know people who make a million dollars or whatever it is or achieve a high level or get to a certain point of sports however you want to do it it all requires sacrifice to get there but what i will say is it shouldn't like it didn't feel like sacrifice to me because it was so in line with what i wanted to do and at the core of my identity Although, yes, you give up things, I, I gained a lot of satisfaction from the process in itself. It wasn't about the end result. And we've talked about this as well, like your journey to, to just working for yourself and doing filming required loads of sacrifice. But, and it is sacrifice and it isn't because you're doing something that you absolutely love. And so you're willing to give up a lot of stuff because you derive so much satisfaction through the process, even when it's hard. And that's when you know you're on the right path when you are giving up a lot, giving you all, but it's still, you're still getting satisfaction from it. It's not a constant battle. And that's a really good indicator you're on the right path. It feels so good now, so good. <laughs> yeah, completely refreshed. That is the, uh, do something uncomfortable, feel really good afterwards. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, it's all right. You ever been there? No, I just saw oh, that yeah. sign. Mega. Yeah. yeah.